In the last lesson, we looked at installing npm packages globally to enable you to use them wherever you are within your terminal and your environment. But when you're working on a specific project, you can't rely on the environment that your code is being run in having those programs installed. And this is especially true when you're working in a team of developers, potentially all working on the same code base at the same time. So we need a way of specifying what packages are required for our project. And the way this is done with Node.js is to specify what dependencies are required for a project in a special file called package.json. And we can generate these with a special npm command, which I'll show you in just a second. But let's imagine we're starting a new project. Let's create a new folder which will hold all of the code for our new project. So I've just created a new folder and navigated to it, and I'm going to generate a package.json file by running the command npm init. So this runs a program that will ask you a few questions in order to generate that package.json file, and you'll see there are default values provided to you in the parentheses. So I'm just going to hit enter for each of these to accept the default values. And once you've completed all those steps, if you actually navigate to your folder, you'll see we've got a new file called package.json. And if we examine that, you can see we've just got a very simple JSON file with all those values that we went through on the command line a second ago. So some of these properties are quite obvious, but we'll go through some of the others in just a moment. But let's get back to installing a dependency to our project. So we're actually going to install the Nodemon package that we installed in the previous lesson. But instead of installing it globally, we'll actually install it as a dependency of our project. And the way we do this is simply run npm install again, but this time we don't need to pass in the dash g option because we're not installing it globally. So two things have actually happened here. First, we've got a new property inside of our package.json, which is the dependencies of the project. And as you can see, nodemon is now listed there. But you may have also noticed in our file explorer on the left hand side, we've got a new folder called node underscore modules. And this is actually where all of the packages for this project are stored. So if we were to open that up and have a quick look, all of these packages have been installed and these are where the 223 packages from nodemon will actually live. So node modules is kind of like our library for our project. And generally you wouldn't store this within your version control and save it in your project. We only need to keep a record of the dependencies that we need because they can be reinstalled at any time. So for example, if we were to remove that node modules folder and we wanted to reinstall all of our dependencies, we can simply run npm install. And node or rather npm will work through all of the dependencies within your package.json and reinstall them. And as you can see, the node modules has been reinstated with all of the same packages listed back in our library. So as I mentioned, most of the properties in the package.json are fairly self-explanatory, name being the name of the project, version, description of the project, author, license, and we've just seen how the dependencies work as well. And we also have the main property, which indicates the file that should be used should your project be a module that exports some values. And we'll talk about modules and exporting in a later lesson. And then we have the scripts property, which enables us to set up various commands to run when we issue npm commands. And a common one to use is npm start. So I've just added a new property so that when we call npm start from the terminal, it will run a file called app.js. And of course, that doesn't actually exist at the moment. So let's just create that now. And we should probably also say we want to run that with node. So if we just run that again, you'll see we get the message coming out saying the app is running. But of course, we've installed nodemon as a dependency of this project. So we could also use nodemon as the command to run our JavaScript file. And as you can see, that will use the nodemon dependency in our project and then run our app.js file and watch for changes. So this is just a quick introduction to package.json and they can get quite complex when you have a large application. You may have tens or possibly hundreds of dependencies within your project. So it can start to get a little unwieldy. But we'll be coming back to the package.json file over the next few lessons as we start to look at working with other modules that are available within the NPM repository.